Hey guys, Artosis here with some more Caster Muse and Rock Star League. We are in Group B of the Round of 16. This is the final decider match. And we're in game number two. Yoon actually lost game one to Fengji. Can Fengji go to the round of eight? That would be absolutely phenomenal. Seems like he's outplaying Yoon in CVZ, to be honest. Uh, yeah, like Yoon overproduced drones by like two, and then Fengji came in. Those two drones did try to fight. Uh, one thing to mention about that, like it's kind of fast paced commentating that, so it's hard to explain every little nuance, but. Uh, Lings will not auto-target drones, and drones actually have more range than Lings do. So, uh, they don't have the as high DPS because they don't attack as quickly. They do have more health. So, like, a drone can go in and kind of fight reasonably well. Uh, it blocks the Zerglings quite a bit, uh, from getting in onto yours. So, sometimes you're getting, like, extra hits on the Zerglings that are near the drones, that type of thing. So, like, it can be defendable, but it was some good execution there from Fengji. And Fengji was able... Uh, to to take him down like <laughs> it, it, we saw Yoon really trying to come back but it was not meant to be now taking a look here we're on Neo Sylphid and we actually have a nine pool here from Yoon uh, he is going nine pool and there is the gas we don't see a cancel yet let's see no cancel okay so uh, no big surprise there either this looks more like a 12 pool over on the other side so historically, looking at these two builds, uh, a 12 pool has been considered the counter to a nine pool uh, because you just get like a little bit more in the way of drones, but also your lings are out quickly enough that your opponent's lings can't deal damage to you, right? This this used to be the the common knowledge of, of Zerg versus Zerg was like nine pool beats hatchery first, hatchery first beats 12 pool, and 12 pool beats nine pool <clears throat> i would say that those rules don't really stand anymore it's more of uh and it never was a hundred percent you win right but it's like a, a very strong advantage way back in the day nowadays i'd say yeah there is an advantage uh inherent in that triangle still but not as much as there used to be people have gotten much better at micro uh people have gotten a lot more decisive like a lot of these nine pool layer builds I've seen people just tear apart a successful expansion build with where you do things like fly in the middle with the mutas and stop lings from reinforcing from this hatchery, then you end up killing this one. Uh, it can be pretty crazy, but it looks like we actually have a little bit of action here. You can see he, he does have enough lings out. Ooh, good targeting from Yoon. Wow. Wow. That's, that is actually harder than you think it is. Uh, Fengji used the, the trick that Yoon was using in the previous game. He sent his drone up to the front. Uh, and was just using it for some additional damage to try to hold a little bit better, and then Yoon insta-snapped the drone. And the thing is, you don't just right-click on the drone. If your lings are not in the right position, you're not clicking on the right drone, it's not going to happen. Your lings are actually going to take lots of extra hits, and you're going to be you're going to pay for that. But he killed that drone very, very quickly, and you can see that Yoon is now up a single drone here. And, well, that is the nature of Zerg vs. Zerg. Literally every unit means a lot uh well we'll see if that that ends up in a, a yoon victory obviously one drone isn't going to completely decide the game uh we have the spire coming up and of course over on fengji's side he does have his layer started but in this type of game he either has to kill him with lings or he needs to go spore colony because his muters are going to be much much later so let's see what he ends up doing we have a beautiful setup here from yoon he's got his lings all in a line and this basically makes it they're as tight as can be right so you can't attack in because two lings will be attacking one because you can't get your lings this close on an attack move so these this is actually an incredibly important thing to be able to do in Zerg Zerg, and you can see him reinforcing it right he's getting them as tight as possible it's just you're going to be inefficient attacking in uh with with your lings into a ling formation like this Let's take a look back at home for Fengji. He's got his evolution chamber started. As I was mentioning, three mutas are on the way. And it looks like Fengji wants to break in. Let's see if he's able to do so. Missed the beginning of that battle, but trust me, that's that's how it was going. 
Uh, and the Lings will be knocked out for you, and that's a normal thing. That's what you're expecting. He does have a Sunken that he wants to make, but he actually cancels it as the Lings enter his base. I think it's because his Mutas are about to finish, so he's just going to utilize the Mutas here uh, as his Ling defense. He does end up losing... I think we see one drone body right there. Maybe... I don't know. <laughs> I was kind of talking too quickly there. Couldn't really hear it. But we have the spores coming up. It looks like these mutas are going to take out some of the overlords. And back at home, of course, a spore here as well. You're actually going to need two spores per line to really defend everything. And in fact, uh, as that count continues to grow... The mutilus count, you're going to need more and more spores because once they start getting enough mutas to kill your spores off, that is the right move with this type of build. So a couple lings going in, checking out what's what. These mutas are just standing guard right now. Yoon wants to make sure there are no ling counterattacks. It's a big part of the play of a two hatchery build like this. You have more larvae but your mutas are late. So you try to do things like counterattacks with Zerglings. You'd keep the, the mutas at home for your opponent. And look at this. Yoon doesn't even care about a second base. Instead, he goes for a hatchery in his main. Oh, well, he's going to go for three hatch. Okay. Not what I was expecting. He's got like 11 drones. <laughs> Barely even mining gas. Of course, you want to, when you're going to add those uh, hatcheries, get as many minerals as possible. And look at this, we have one Muta that he slipped in down here. This is why I was talking about you really need two spores per base. One spore simply doesn't have the range. So he's going to deny these mineral patches, right? One, three, four, five, six. Six patches should be denied. Yeah, it can reach all of those. So that's a big deal. Oh, oh, careful. Really good to keep it on hold position there. But obviously, as the Spire finishes and you have it there, he can make his own Mutalisks and deal some damage to you. Now, taking a look... This hatchery's been up a lot longer, but he hasn't taken the gas yet. Look at what Yoon is doing. He's making the hatchery and the gas. So what he wants to do is make sure he does not fall behind on the gas count. Because that is one of the big ways uh, that the expansion build can end up coming back. Is they can just say, you know what? We'll, we'll get that second gas. We'll actually overwhelm with mutas. Yoon also now, instead of making more mutas, starts the carapace upgrade. Incredibly important in ZVZ if you don't know about that. Well, welcome to Brood War. You're new. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of complicated things in this game, including the fact that Glaives bounce multiple times. And eh, we'll talk about that another time. But uh, either way, looking at the position, I think Yoon has actually gotten himself an advantage here. Uh, see, his gas is mining like basically the same time as this gas. The one thing I really do like for Fengji... But one thing I really don't like is he has not started his own carapace, so he's going to get really far behind when carapace finishes. But he does have the spores, right? So the spores add this layer of defense that Yoon simply does not have. Okay, like let's say that you want to harass a natural. Okay, well harassing this natural is not too easy. There's a couple spores there. You fly your mutas in, you're taking damage that whole time. That's going to stall you out a little bit. Fengji is going to have more options there. Whereas if Fengji harasses, it's like, well, there's there's nothing here. So he can run in, get damage with impunity. So definitely the spores can play a big role. Uh, but looking at this game, I think the carapace upgrade is going to actually play a slightly bigger role. And I think the fact that Yoon has slipped in another hatchery is a huge deal as well. Let's take a look at Mulus counts. We have eight here. And we have nine here. Uh, both are popping out more mutas, more Scourge and everything. Uh, it should be approximately even on the muta and Scourge count. But again, the Carapace. It is such a big deal, guys. Like, you go from zero armor to one. The Glaives bounce, right? <laughs> so you're actually preventing a huge amount of damage, like three damage per attack. Uh, it's, it's a big deal. So I do think that that's going to make a, uh, quite a difference when they fight when Carapace is done. But right now, Fengji's coming in before that Carapace. Ooh, some Scourge end up hitting. This is actually pretty darn good from Fengji. Look at this. He gets on top of the Mutas. And wait a second, though. We have way more Mutas here. Oh, Fengji over committing there for sure. Well, that's honestly, that's like very close to game. Okay, like, it kind of looked like similar amounts. And now Carapace is going to finish. And we have 10 mutas here. And 7. 
Like, even having one Mutalesce than your opponent greatly changes the outcome. It's it's kind of insane, right? Because everything is always shooting all at once, and you get that extra kill, and then it just kind of uh, avalanches, right? Like, that's that's what we see in these types of battles. So I am not liking where Feng is at. I think he has to play a very turtled game from here. And that's going to be hard because there's an additional hatchery for Yoon. Like, he can he can just produce a little bit more. He can get a few more drones. He can produce a few more Scourge. He, if, if we see any switches in the Lings, obviously he can make more Lings. See a Sunken going up there for any possible run-bys. It is a very turtled position here for Fengji. I don't know if he has clicked upon the Scourge there to see that there is plus one Carapace, but obviously that is a very painful thing to go against. Normally in a position like this for Fengji, what you'll end up doing is mass, mass, mass Scourge. Because your Mutas won't fight as well, but if you the Scourge don't care about the Carapace, honestly. Okay, here we go. That is a lot of Scourge on both sides. Can Fengji actually end up doing it? Some pretty good micro to start. Ooh, very nice hit right there. Oh my god, and now all the Scourge are gone. It looks like we have... Well, it's very similar amounts of mutas, but we have that additional carapace that I've been talking about quite a bit. A couple more Scourge coming in for Fengji. M Yoon trying to micro against them. Fengji with four left. Oh my god, look at that difference. Ten against four. This game is over. Yoon absolutely 100% going to take it. The mutas fly all the way home. Yoon just going to clean up whatever he wants to. Honestly, he can kill these mutas and the spore. <laughs> not something that you would want to do. That's not a good habit to develop, but like he can he can basically just kill him at this point. And you see he's picking off a lot of drones. He is taking quite a bit of hits from the spores. You can see how much they uh, influence everything. Spores are like incredibly strong anti-air. Much better than turrets, much better than photon cannons. Uh, they, are, they are a fearsome anti-air for sure. So much health on him, man. So much damage as well. But yeah, Yoon should be able to finish Fengji pretty quickly here. And I think Fengji, of course, knows that. He starts his own Carapace upgrade. We're minutes off from him being equal on upgrades. And now Yoon goes after that Spore for a moment. There are Lings that run by, but Fengji guessed that this exact move would happen and has a Sunken here. So it's not the biggest deal. He can deal with that reasonably well. I hear two drones die, though. That's... That's painful to lose two drones right there. So he drops from 17 to 15. Yoon continues to keep that advantage. And look now, look at all this coming in. Those, that additional hatchery. Yeah, that's going to be a GG tied up 1-1 onto the final game.